In this video, we're going to do a sort of real-world example, at least something a little bit more real-world than the other things that we've been doing in this class. Uh, we're going to show a uh, very, very simplistic uh, coronavirus modeling program. So basically what we have here is we have this class called person, and we're keeping track of the person's position. So if we imagine a two-dimensional uh, screen or a box, this will tell you where the person is. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a whole bunch of people sort of milling around, and when they run into each other, if somebody is infected, then it will infect the other person. So that's kind of what we're going to simulate here. So we have variables to keep track of their position. We have a Boolean to, to tell whether or not they're immune. So the idea is, is that if a person gets infected, they'll only be infected for a certain amount of time. And then as soon as a certain amount of time has passed, then they will become immune. We actually, in this program, didn't model people dying. Uh, I suppose we could. Um, and then this variable infected tells you where they are in their infection. So if they're not infected, then this value is zero. When they initially get infected, the value goes up to one, and then it increases at every step through the simulation until it reaches some duration. In this case, we've set it to 100. And then once it reaches 100, then they become immune. So in other words, they recover and get better. Um, velocity x and velocity y, it models the person's movement. So this is how, how much they move in the x direction, and this is how much they or how fast they move in the y direction um, and then this is just the size of the screen the world that they're going to be these people are going to be wandering around in so um, this random variable is to generate randomness so um, for example in this person constructor here um, we're going to randomly set their velocity. So their velocity can be either be negative or positive. A negative velocity just means they go either down or to the left, whereas a positive velocity means they go right or up, I guess. And so that's the that's way you can look at velocity. Um, and then we have this move method. Oh, I should also point out that I made um, X, Y, immune and infected public just because I was lazy and I didn't want to write getters and setters. Um, obviously, if you were doing this correctly, you would want to make these all private and then have getters and setters. But I was just doing a quick and dirty program. So um, then the move method, all it basically does is it just adds whatever the velocity is to their current position, in both the X and Y direction. It checks to make sure that if they reach, you know, the edge of the screen, then they bounce back and start heading the opposite direction. And then we also do some checks to see, hey, if they're already infected, each time they move, they get closer to immunity. In other words, their infection number goes up until they reach that threshold. And then if they've reached the threshold, then they are not infected anymore and they become immune. So that's kind of the simple, obviously it's not super accurate for how the real world works, but it's just kind of an interesting, fun little thing to do. Um, now, the rest of the program involves some more um, swing components. We've only ever used J option pane. Um, and this one is going to use J panel and it's going to implement this action listener interface. It's not really super important. I don't necessarily want to get into a big long discussion about J panels and action listeners and stuff. But the point is to just show you that. Yes, there's more things that you can do in Java besides collect a bunch of input from the user and then parrot it back out. So this J panel is actually what handles all of the animation. And so we have some variables here. I'm not going to go through all of these, but um, one of the things that we should look at here, so this is the array of people. So we're going to have, in this case, we've got 200 people who are going to be wandering around our world. and as they run into each other, they will infect people and things like that. So then we have our constructor here, which just basically sets up the size of the world to, uh, in this case, we've set it to 800 pixels by 600 pixels. Um, and then here is where we generate a whole bunch of random people. So we just basically randomly generate positions and then place those people in the positions. And then we need a patient zero, somebody who's the initial person who's infected. So we have, we just take P sub zero, so the very first person in the array, and we say that he's infected. Okay. And then 
At each step through the animation, we're going to move the people. And then at, at each step through the animation, we're also going to check for collisions. So basically, our collision function looks like this. So we're going to loop through the array, and then we're going to loop through the array again so that we can compare... Um, we can compare one person in the array to all the other people in the array. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to do a distance formula. So if you remember distance from geometry, we're going to compute the distance between P sub I and P sub J. So two different people in the array. And that's what this formula does. And then if the distance is less than a certain threshold, so in this case we're saying the infected distance. In other words, if people are close enough together then we will say okay if if two people are very very close together and one of them is infected then as long as the other person isn't immune then that person will become infected so that's what these lines do and that's basically it um this paint component um is executed every at every step through the animation and so basically what it's going to do is it's going to loop through all of the people and say if the person is if the person is infected we're going to color them red if the person is immune so in other words they've already recovered we're going to color them green otherwise if they have never been infected yet then they're going to just be black and so then we're going to just draw circles to represent the people okay and so then we have one last file which is our i guess our implementation class and this is our main method where all we basically are doing is creating a J-frame and we're adding this new animation panel to the J-frame. That's pretty much all this does. So I want to show you what this looks like so you can see. Um, so there we see down here, we, there was one person initially and as they're running into people, these red dots, um, other people are getting infected. You see that? And so now we now we start noticing that as people are moving around, more people are getting infected. The number of red dots is going up. Now we're starting to see some green dots, so people who were infected are starting to recover. But we still see a huge number of red dots right here. And as the simulation continues, we could, you know, obviously tweak the parameters. We could add more people. We could make the people make the people larger. We could make things run faster. We could make it so that um, it's easier to get infected or harder to get infected, depending on your distance. Um, we could implement social distancing, where we could make it so that it would be very difficult for people to run into each other, or we'd have a large number of people who are stationary. We could do that. So you see, now we've, got, we've sort of reached a point where a lot of people have been sick and have recovered. We still have a few sick people, a few red dots, and then we have some dots in here of people who never actually got infected. They managed to escape uh, ever getting, getting infected. So we have a couple more here that are still sort of working their way through. That person up there recovered. That person recovered. We've got one more person left. They'll probably recover. And so now we've sort of reached a steady state in our simulation. So again, this isn't meant to be any kind of like real actual like pandemic modeling. But it sort of shows a very, very basic idea of how you might do something like this and how you might actually use Java to do something useful. So that's sort of the point of this video. And you can see that it this didn't really take that much code. I mean... This implementation class is 15 lines of code. The person class is uh, 47 lines of code. And the animation panel, which a lot of it is just kind of boilerplate stuff, ends up being 85 lines of code. So we're looking at what? 85 plus 47 is 132, we're looking at 147, less than 150 lines of code for that whole program. Anyway, so that's just kind of an interesting thing um, that I thought you guys might find kind of cool.